Hi everybody, it's Agnes and I'm really excited today because I am with someone I've known for a while. Paris, welcome to the interview. <laughs> Hello, Agnes, how are you? I'm good, good to see you. I, I was really excited about this because I, I'm so creatively proud of you. I, I'm just really proud of you. I've had contact with you over the years off and on. And I've seen your journey creatively. And firstly, I'm getting ahead of myself. Can you tell people where you are from culturally and where you live? Okay, so I am from, uh, I am from Pakistan, but I live in Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, and uh, currently I live in Houston. I work as a, uh, as a model, as an artist, as an activist. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, before we talk about all that good stuff, can you, the reason I asked you to come on here was yes, because of the creative success, but I know there's many people that watch my channel that have got a heck of a lot of family pressure about what they can and can't do. And I know that that's been part of your background culturally. So can you share a bit about what your family thought about what you wanted to do and the pressures you've had and how you just broke free of that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I come from a very traditional family. You know, um, I don't think so. Anybody has stepped in into the showbiz world. It was a big shock for them. Um, uh, not very accepting at all. I would be very bluntly honest. I mean, my parents were okay with it, but they were not happy about it. Yeah. And they were like, you can do better things than that. And I was just like, I don't know, what does that mean? Better things, you know? And I was like, yeah, did, no, but... What did they want you to do? Did they have something specific they wanted you to do I'm, or be? They wanted me to be a teacher ah. or be a doctor, which is very, very typical back in our country to uh, have that respectable job, which mm. I don't think so. We live in this world anymore that, you know, jobs... Um, you know, describe that how respectable you are. I don't think so. That's how it is. But, you know, and I was just like, okay. And they, they asked me to do different things. And, you know, I tried. Uh, I tried doing it, but I always felt like something was not right. Yeah. And uh, so, and I was just like, you know what? Um, I'll do what I want to do. It was uh, in the start, it was not easy. How old, uh, were you, how old were you when you decided I'm going to do what I want to do? When did you have that thought? I think I was 19. Okay. Um, I was 19. Um, I took the first step. I went to the fashion school of design yeah. um, to study fashion and everybody made fun of me. What kind of studies, you know, studies are those? Fashion is not study. Yeah. And I was right now, it's a billion dollar business everywhere yeah. in the world. Right. Yeah. And so I was just like, okay, what is that? Go be a doctor, go be an engineer, do something else, you know? But that time my mom stood up with me. She was like, okay, you know, maybe she, that's what she wants. But even in the back of the head, in the head, I don't think they took me serious. Yeah. You know, so I did that. That was the first big move because like, you know, it was very unconventional. It was not your books and all that stuff. It was not like that. So that and was the Paris. Stuff. Was that in the U S or was that in Pakistan? In Pakistan, in Pakistan. Oh, okay. So you, how old were you when you moved from Pakistan to the U.S.? I think 21. Oh, okay. 21. So I moved here. And so then, you know, I, I did different things. You know, they, they were like very, very specific. Do this. This is more decent. This is more respectable. And I was just like, I was young, you know, yeah. I, I, I needed guidance so much from them. But at the end of the day, you know, our parents want the best of us. It's mm. not that they don't. So, so I can, I, can I ask, is modeling from a Pakistani point of view, a disrespectful profession? Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Be because can you explain to me why? Okay. So a uh, showbiz generally in Asia yeah. is seen very badly. Okay. Um, um, it's not just Pakistan, India too. Even though, uh, they, even though Bollywood exists and all of yes. that, it's still, okay, I didn't know that. They still have that mindset that I, I don't know why they have it, but they, this goes back years that what I listened, that people who can make money and people who lack in talent, they go to showbiz because they ah. have which is so uh, 
Wow. So pleased. It's mm. just like so. But and like, oh, you come from a very well off family. Why do you need to go to showbiz for money? I'm like, no, it's not even about the money. Mm. It's about showbiz. So it's still now, it's not looked up nicely. Wow. It's just, okay. That's, that's have something better to do it. So that's how the culture is. I cannot change the culture, you know? No. That's how the culture is. So, but it was. It was the start. Me going to the fashion school, that was the first big step. Me coming to the United States, the second step. Yeah. And then I was doing these different odd jobs, like doing the, I did the makeup course, the cosmetology course I was doing. This was, again, not from their perspective, the good thing. Yeah. Even I was like, this is not a job. What are you doing? Mm. If you were happy about it. And I was just like constantly trying to ask myself, what do I want to do? It's just like, yeah. it's so difficult to understand. You know, they were with me, my family, they're still with me. But with the, with the career choice, they are very strict with it. Mm. Like they, they didn't create, you know, you know, blockages for me. They were not like that. Okay, do yeah. whatever you want to. But, you know, mm. that's how and a few letters back i got into with i met a lady i was doing backstage makeup for yeah so she's a designer and so she's like what are you doing backstage i'm like i'm the artist who's doing makeup she's like why don't you start modeling i was like who me okay yeah so my height is five four okay i'm not even that tall okay so, so models required five six five seven height yeah so that also had this belief like how can i model right yeah you know, see models five eight five nine we have men that that tall we don't have women that tall you know yes so, let's try i was like i was a little bit hesitant i was like not sure about it. i was like i don't know what is she's talking about let's just come to the place so i went there she told me you have to lose weight okay now that was the biggest challenge i was having because i I never found myself heavy or I never had weight issues. I was never, you know, had that image of mine. Yeah. I'm a pity. But she's like, you have to be in shape. And there is a certain size that you okay. want. And it's a two. At that time, I was a six. Okay. So it's a normal size. There is nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But the requirement for modeling was two or four. Okay. And I Okay, I started working out, you know, I was eating healthy, everything. And I was like, how can I be from six to two? Mm. And how old were you at this stage? I was, um, I crossed my 25s. I remember that I was above 25. Yes, okay. 27, eight, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was, yeah, that was it. Started losing, I mean, it was not even about the weight. It was more about the body form, how yeah. I looked like and uh, I was like how I'm gonna do it and I used to see these other girls who had like amazing heights and perfect body and I'm like how the hell I'm gonna just <laughs> you know do like so pressure and you know but that mentor of mine was just like no you can do it keep doing it I kept pushing it I think within four to five months I completely my body image completely changed I started eating healthy I was more energetic. I was working out. It was more of my lifestyle than compared to be a model. Mm. No, I was not in that mindset. It was, it completely changed. Obviously, then I had a training to do with this, this pe these people to walk on the ramp because it looks very easy on the ramp, but it's not easy the way you walk there. It's very hard mm. it's like because you're wearing those five to six inches heels. Yeah, and they don't care if you have fever or you haven't eaten or something. They just want you to walk and pose that you're very happy. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I did that for a year. Um, starting time, it was not easy. Um, you know, I was still trying to um, merge. Maybe it was the culture thing, or maybe you know, yeah. Something. And I didn't have support from my family. You know, my mom knew it, but obviously she didn't like it. Yeah. I could feel it. Mm. So in, and they, okay, don't post things on Facebook. Okay, don't show things to, to your family. Just ah. keep it to yourself. And that was the biggest trigger in my, like, what, what, why I have to hide it? What, yes. what am I doing? 
Yeah. Who who said don't post anything and don't? My who, parents. My oh, parents. your parents did. Okay, so they were no, a bit. No. They didn't want. Was it um, uh, not wanting people in Pakistan to know what you were doing? So yeah. about feeling uh, some kind of shame about what you were still doing yeah. at that point. Okay, I see. Yeah, it's like, okay, do whatever you want, but don't post it. And I just feel like this is like something I'm achieving. Why do I have to hide it? Yes. yes. Like, do you see how the opposite it is? And I'm like, you know, first I used to listen to that. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to post it anyway. Yeah. Think whatever you want. I'm going to post it because my intentions are very clear. Yeah, I'm not here to harm anyone. I'm not here to do anything wrong. This is something I love. Yeah, so why do you not do it? The yeah. minute I started doing that, uh, I think I started enjoying my modeling days more. I started getting more photo shoots, and but I always had that thing uh, because I'm I'm in a in a community here in also in Houston where I'm seen in a different way because of my family name. Yeah, uh, it's just like oh, so this girl from this family is doing modeling now. Really, not in a good way. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, very gossipy, and oh. you know, yeah. And this is something. No, it it was not nice. But you know, of of, of course, at that time it affected me. I'm not going to lie about that. But yeah. later, on, it was just like, I'm just going to keep doing it. Yeah. So two years in modeling, I keep doing a different shoots. Somewhere I was getting paid. I think it was more about my beliefs, yeah. less about that. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get paid or not. If I don't know if they, they, they want something required. I had yeah. so many disbeliefs about myself. Yeah. Just the way I told you about the height issue I had. Yeah. I'm a 5'4". Why did it take me? Yeah. You know, that was the belief. They didn't, my parents didn't give me the belief, you know. I had myself in my mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. So two years later on, uh, I started getting like proper work. Um, I started getting it. And then I got this video opportunity. I remember uh, I started. Uh, no, during that, yes, I met you. Okay. Before me getting into the video stuff, I met you. You know, I saw your videos, obviously. And I was like, what is law of attraction? I never heard about that. Yeah. What is that? And it was really you know, interesting for me, the way you can create things. And first of your videos, I used to never understand, like you say, let go, but hold the desire. I never understood that. <laughs> I was like, what is she trying to say? <laughs> oh. I like, she wants me to keep the desire and let go. And how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you obviously worked it out. <laughs> I mean, it took me a while to understand that thing. I'm like, mm. okay, here she's saying me keep the feeling inside and let go. Yeah. And I still didn't get it. So I have, um, I have, a, I have a godmother. Uh, she's not from uh, Pakistan. She is a Jew. She lives in um, Las Vegas. Yeah. I met. Her. She started the law of attraction too. She was a big believer in it. Okay. So, so I told her. I, I think she has big has been the biggest men, biggest support and I have done. She's not my real mother, but I call her my real mother. Yeah. She didn't give me birth, but she was the, I, she's still the biggest support I can ever count on. Mm. Lovely. Was like, yeah, I used to call her mother. And, you know, we, we have so different cultures, yeah. but we just connect yeah. with so much love and all that. And I was like, what is love attraction? And then I told her, I'm like, I met this Agnes. <laughs> and she said, let go and keep the desire. What is that? And she's like, no, 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 honey. She's telling you to hold the desire inside your heart, but you are not pounding on it when it's going to come, when it's going to come, why it's not coming. That is what she's trying to tell you. <laughs> I still didn't understand it. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what is she's talking about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I used to listen to you, but not regularly. Yeah. Then I like into the different issues obviously i got email in touch with you yeah and then i understood what you were actually trying to say is um you know when you want something uh the universe already knows it but if you are in the wanting space i wanted i wanted i wanted you will always be in the wanting yeah so live in the moment and feel that you already have it 
that went very late in my head. I, I don't know about how many people are like that, but I was one of them. Yeah. So I understood that. Then I did proper meditations. Like I started listening to Miss Hay. Um, I started listening to um, Dr. Bryant. Uh, of course, uh, Oprah. Yes. And they talk about it. Reading, um, who is it? Dr. Deepak Chopra. Yeah. Uh, all these people. Yes. Uh, okay. So when you listen to them, your whole perspective of life changes when you when they talk, yeah. right? I'm like, yeah. what, they, what the hell is going in the world? No doubt, this world is becoming <laughs> right. It's like you're creating it. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I enjoyed listening to Oprah, but Oprah was, also didn't speak all about law of attraction. She used to be more about philosophical thing mm -hmm. and uh, less about uh, law of attraction. Then I moved to Louis Hay, the affirmations. That yeah. picked up really with me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm like, what is this affirmation? Why do I have to tell myself 100 times a day that I'm loved? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. I never, because in my home, I was never told that I was loved. Yeah. You know, you know no, we were, never, we were never shown love. We were never... Yeah. allowed to express i mean my dad did i remember i still he still does it he's very expressing but my mom and the rest of the family there is no thing called expression of love yeah, yeah we do love you know it they don't say it yeah so me myself telling me i love myself yeah 100 times a day that was just like like they were my, my siblings they, they they probably think i'm crazy <laughs> No, and I used to like do affirmation like thousands a day. I'm loved. I'm wanted, and you know. And when I, when I feel down, I used to start doing the affirmation in my head. Yeah. You know, you know this is and uh, like one one or two weeks it didn't work. I was thinking probably I'm just being stupid and yeah. I don't know what is. This now. After that, I started feeling the energy. Mm. I am loved. I was just saying. I'm loved, I'm loved. No, no, no. I am loved. You yeah. have to put feeling in it. <laughs> yeah. Because your, your words hold power. Yeah. It's just like so easy. You were just throwing energy everywhere. I, I never knew this kind of stuff. The energy, uh, the, how words hold power. I, I didn't do it. Then I used to do like slowly, I'm loved. And I used to feel it. I am loved. Yeah. Okay. What does it exactly mean that I'm very content, I'm very happy, I'm peaceful? That's what it means. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then the second one was I am wanted. I think I had the most that thing inside me, not feeling wanted. I had that thing a lot. Inside yeah. Me. Yeah. I'm not wanted, not accepted, you know, yes. left. Uh, that, that, that negative feeling that. Oh, yeah. friends leave me alone. They they leave. They find better friends, or you know, uh, better relationships go to other people. I have that thing so yeah. much inside me. Yeah. Um, and that Paris, do you think that that's cultural or that's just your family experience? Where do you think that came from for you? I think. Sorry, I think it came both from my culture and I think mostly from my family. Yeah. Um, Again, I, I, I don't know, I, did, I, I told you before, but I come from a very traditional, very conservative family. Yeah. Uh, so um, we have certain rules and regulation and principles that we have to abide. Yeah. Uh, despite a woman or a man, it's not gender based. Uh, either it's a guy or a girl, you have to follow that. That's just yeah. our family traditions. Yeah. We kept it. That was something uh, like we don't do outside marriages. Yeah. Okay. We marry inside our own self. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. And if you don't find it, you're not getting married. Yeah. Can okay. I ask, can I ask, is there religious, um, is it cultural and religious? Have you got a religious uh, background as well? Yes. I'm a Muslim. Okay. So, so uh, yes, it is a religious thing as well. As but cultural. I think it's more, yeah. But a more of a cultural thing. Yeah. Uh, like, um, obviously, like, you can marry, I mean, I had this thing, you can marry uh, a non-Muslim outside. Yeah. You can go outside someone who doesn't speak your language. Yeah. Who doesn't uh, have the same values. 
I don't know where this come from, but this is coming from generations in the family. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Do yeah. you think moving to the US, it's kind of loosened its grip a bit because you've, yes. because you've left Pakistan and you've got now two cultures. You've got the American culture and the Pakistani culture. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that was, I think that was the biggest jump I could have. I think uh, because me moving here at the age of 21. Yeah. You know, it's a very young age. It's just like, I, I, I you know, I finished my teens. I'm just stepping in my adulthood. Yeah. And I come here and coming to United States was a completely flip. You um, know, unbelievable. Must have been it's so opposite. Completely opposite. It is yeah. just like, um, I mean, but for me, for, for a while, I didn't understand the culture, the American culture as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the way people communicate here, the way people have friends, it's so different. Yes. Um, yes. And, uh, and here we don't see groups like this is my group or this is his group. Yeah. I, saw, I saw that in my country a lot. Yep. This is our class. This is their class. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. I, it, it was, I think, I think me moving to United States was the biggest, uh, you know, I would say revolution in my life. I would yeah. say it really changed the way I look things. I became more independent. Yes. You know, obviously, I started working. I started going to college. I was driving a car. I think back home, we had drivers and we had people who drove the car. But yes. I always felt limited. Yes. Why is this guy driving me everywhere? Why can't I drive? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so my dad used to say, people are bad here. They look at women in a negative, bad way. They don't like independent women. You know, my yeah. dad was not against the independent woman. It's just the overall society. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I used to see on the streets how these male drivers used to treat male, female drivers in yeah. a very disrespectful way. Wow. So I used to see it. And I'm like, no, he's not lying. He's telling me the truth. I yeah. Just, very afraid. Yes. I will never drive over there. People are crazy over there. Yeah. It's just, they pass racial marks on you. They call you names. You know, I, I saw that growing up all my life. Yeah. So I was like, no, I will never drive. I come here in the United States. I started driving. Yeah. Everyone is so happy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody is driving a straight game white, old, like whatever everybody yeah. is driving. Okay? Yeah. And, and they have no problem, okay? Yeah. It's just the driver in the seat. Why do you have to find out which sex they belong to? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. So me being independent was the big step for me. Yeah. You know? uh, like I, I had a lot of confidence. And, uh, but my dad was always like this, this biggest figure in my life. I, I always keep saying this because, um, um, my dad, uh, was not like a typical, um, traditional father. No. Yeah. Because uh, he, um, followed the traditions as well, but my father was a pilot. Yeah. As well. Wow. So you saw yeah. him do what he really wanted to do. Yes. So, so he showed you my example. Go. Yes. So wow. I used to see him, uh, you know, it, 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 again, Agnes, it was not about the money. Uh, trust me. It was never about the money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, come from, you know, like traditional wealthy families. It's yeah. never about, it's about how can you break those cycles that yes. you're in. Yes. You know? So my dad always says the day you were born, I got my letter. Uh, for the airline that we hire you as a oh, pilot. Oh, really? Wow. What an amazing synchronicity. Oh, my God. And uh, so I saw him, too, like he was balancing both. Again, mm. men back there in our country, they have a completely different life. Yeah. Uh, we don't have that life. I mean, yeah. we do have it uh, because of, uh, you know, obviously the, the brought up I had, the surroundings I had, I did have it, but still it was limited. Yeah. You know, it's not that do whatever you want to do. No. Yeah. Yeah. So can I, I, Paris, can I ask, why did your mom and dad decide to leave Pakistan and why did they pick the U.S.? Uh, I mean, they're still over there. Um, they're still oh, over there. They're in Pakistan. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ah, month. so it's just you that came to the US. Yes. And you're you've got you've got siblings as well. Are they in Pakistan? No, my my brother lives with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So my, I didn't realize. I thought your parents were with you. No, no, no. They're not. They, they do visit me. That's why I thought that because I remember when yeah. we communicated once. You said your mum and dad were with you, and I thought, oh, okay, now I get it. All right. Yeah. They do visit me, but uh, no, they don't live uh, with me. So yeah, that was that was big one. Um, yeah. I saw this whole thing with him being a pilot, and you know, uh, flying the world, and we, we see a different world. I mean. We started traveling with him too, obviously, because he used to take with us, take us yeah. with him. With him. Yeah. yeah. But uh, again, living in a, in a different country and visiting a country is a completely different story. Yeah. You know? So we always saw this, this really shiny thing. Oh, the United States. Oh, England. I think first country I, was, I went to was England. And um, I mean, always uh, because India, Pakistan, both countries are very influenced by the British culture. Yeah. So the, uh, even the education system is still the mm. British co- yeah. way we talk. And, uh, and when I come here, I started going to school. The schooling was so different. People yeah. called point for a decimal. I'm like, what is that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> it was just, when you say schedule, they say schedule. I'm like, okay, okay, hold on. Yeah. 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 What is going on? And the words are different. Uh, you know, I, I met few of my British friends here, which I connected so easily because we have, you know, language is such a big medium, you know. Mm. So we used to connect on that. And I used to say, I'm like, how do they even talk? <laughs> yes. <laughs> accent you know uh, uh, it, yeah very challenging thing for me picking up the accent the american yeah. accent yeah and i was like what i used to do like that i'm like what say yeah. it again yes and they used to me like what is wrong with her? I <laughs> you know? know i had the same trouble when i went from canada to australia i couldn't understand australians at all i had so much trouble with the accent and it was still english <laughs> It's the accent. Oh my God. And I'm like, okay, they drag the word. Okay. Yeah. They drag the word. And um, I'm not disrespecting any other people. It's just like, it was so different for me. Yeah. And back in my country, we speak the British system until the day to day. Yeah. It's still going. I mean, right now, Americanized things are coming, but it's still the British system. Yes. We still have the same. We, I went to a Catholic school. Would you believe that? I went to a Catholic school wow. where there were and there were stirs and nuns. They used to, uh, you know, water us. We were not allowed to do anything. It was yeah. a very, very strict girls' school. So let me, it, let me ask you, if you came from a, the Muslim faith, how did you end up in a Catholic school? Because the education system is better there. Oh. Muslim schools don't exist in Pakistan. No. Okay. And even if they exist, they are really bad. Oh. They just, uh, they just, I mean, they don't have the quality of education. I mean, maybe now they have it. Yeah. Uh, maybe but uh, not then. Yeah. yeah. My parents also, my mom also went to a Catholic school because, of course, they want me to learn English, obviously. And uh, I think uh, now we have private school system right now, private schools, government schools. I was in a government school. There was no such thing called private school back then. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. And, and then we were okay with it. And we were absolutely okay with that. No problem. Eight yeah. standard. I, t- I was in, in a Catholic school, but then <laughs> I want to change my majors uh, to a science because my dad think that is more respectable again. <laughs> So they they put me in a in, in a private school, obviously a private school and a co-ed school where there were boys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that was a big jump for me. And okay, okay. Well, is they? I mean, obviously they were not against of it, but they obviously was like, don't pay attention to boys. You're just there for two years. Okay, you're just <laughs> going there to finish your. Thing. And I was. How old? I was 16, 17, you know, yeah. that was the time. I was there two years. That school 
I think I got the most of my self-confidence from that place. Wow. Uh, I think the teams were very, very different. Yeah. And when you have different, uh, I don't know, and the, and, and the class limit was small. Yes. Students were less students. So you can focus on students better. Yes. And then I had in my class too. And uh, uh, that's, that was just two years, two year time period I was with them. But mm. that brought so much confidence. Fantastic. You know, I was like such a confident person. Mm. Yeah. Gee, they, did, confident. they did a good job then. If that's what you can say from going to a school, they did a good job. I felt free. Mm. I felt so free. I was, yeah. I, it was not like I was doing crazy things over there. Yeah. It was just like same discipline, same thing. Mm. But it was so liberating, mm. you know. Uh, the, uh, the head or the principal of the school was so open-minded. Exactly, the word open-minded. Yeah, you know? lovely. There were so the guys stand there and the girls stand there. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Guys and girls stand together. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. This is 10 years back. Yeah. That stuff did not exist I mean, it was, but very few people could pick it up because yeah. again, culture in, what can yeah. you do with that? Wow. You know, that's so, wonderful. Yeah, the confidence stuff. Yeah. That come from my school age, but, uh, uh, I would just say one thing like speaking to you for so many years, you have seen me up, down, up, down, you know, you have seen me. Yeah. Uh, but, um, um, law of attraction and meditation yeah. changed my life. Yeah, and I know you do it daily still. Every single day. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've achieved so many things, but at yeah. the same time, even a day I miss, yeah. I feel like, okay, here we go. I'm going back there and I'm not going back there. Yeah. I started back with affirmations. I do the breathing in. Whatever thing that I want or just the self-love meditations, I just do it on the go. And now I'm just like so good with it yeah i can sit in the car with full people around me and i can still meditate wow. you know i'm so good with it because yeah. i'm so doing it <laughs> so i was like no 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 it's not in front of me yeah you know it's not seeing it's something going inside me mm. uh, so um again that also it's all you pushed them you know and they pushed what you say the pushed out thing you pushed out I, yeah yeah. yeah, I didn't understand that for a long time. Too. <laughs> yes, that takes a while to understand. <laughs> I'm like, okay, why would I create someone saying nasty things to me? Why would I say that? Yeah. You know, and also the whole Pono prayer, I think that is one of the godsend things that anybody can have it. If you're going through something or if you have some kind of an issue or whatever it is, again, it starts mm. from you know, it starts from you. You have to accept that first because yeah. there are a lot of, including myself, I didn't want to accept it that, oh, I created that. I didn't want to accept that. Yeah. So the Dr. Hugh Lin, in his interview, he said, hope on a prayer should be done by people who are ready to accept that they created that stuff. Yes. Yes. Kept saying it. It's not like, and I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, who am I saying sorry to? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Am I saying sorry to? That was just like such contradicted thoughts. Yes. And uh, who am I saying I love you? Why do I have to say I love you? Because it was so much that clash I had with those words. Yes. And the more I did it, I think it is one of the best thing anyone can have it in their um, everyday life. It's yeah. not even if you're feeling bad. It's just the total cleanse. It's a it total is. sort. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Keep it. And the minute I do it, I'm like, okay, how upon a prayer? Here we go. Yeah. I created that, you know? Yeah. And I, I gave it to my friends and they were like, they were also having those, what is this? I am sorry. Why do I have to say sorry about it? You know, that ego kicks in. Yeah, you know? it does. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's not, you're not saying sorry to anyone. You are saying sorry to yourself. You are saying, I love you to yourself. Yes. It is not of the other person. It is yeah. you. It's yeah. just, right? Even Well, you, even well you're kind of, well, you're apologizing to yourself for having bad thoughts that hurt you repeatedly about how you feel about yourself, that you're not good enough, that you're not a priority, that you're not loved, you're not wanted, you're second best, 
all of that is what you're apologizing to yourself for, for hurting yourself repeatedly daily with those things and those thoughts. Yes. And, yeah. and those are creating again and again and again, the, the yeah. same patterns, the cycles repeating itself. Um, I, I was just like, uh, affirmations uh, changed me, obviously, you know, but again, it took me a while. I was yeah. like, I'm not telling myself a hundred times a day that I'm loved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why am I doing that? <laughs> uh, then uh, while I was seeing your videos, I, 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 I saw Veronica Isles. Yeah. And yeah, I saw her too. And uh, she was also the same with the affirmations. You know, her, her way is a little bit different. Yeah. She also said the same thing with the affirmations, but in a different way. Um, um, but I was like, no, I'll stick to Agnes because she's doing with me for a long time. You know, when you're with someone for a long time, they yeah. can pick you up really quickly. Yeah. Even recently, I emailed you with a few things and you picked up, no, 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 this is what you're doing. You need to get back with that, okay? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, it didn't took me like two pages to write you down, like what's going on. You're like, okay, you're going back over there. Yeah. And this time, I think I did better than last time because yeah. last time took me a long time. Yeah, you get faster. It's not that you don't go back to old things, but you get faster at getting out of the pothole, definitely. And how many people even know how to get out of it? That's such a big thing. People get stuck in this for so long. Years. Without, Years. without knowing it's them. Oh, without. Okay, what is going on? What's going on? What's going on? And, and when I used to see synchronicities, you know, birds before land yes and i'm like this is agnes told me birds yeah before birds before land. Want, that's what she's talking about when don't pick the fruit before it's ripe again yeah. that's also your one <laughs> I so many meditations of yours i can yeah. close my eyes and tell you how many have done it <laughs> yes yeah. how many ones i've done like, okay i need to do it i um asked many friends of mine to go to your page and see it uh, and I was just like, okay, this is the lady, you know, I met her through YouTube, obviously, I saw her and, you know, and uh, meditation changed my life. So mm. at that time, they were making really fun of it, like, what yeah. is this? Now they like, she's actually right. I'm like, no, she is right. She's not actually right. She is right. Just, just, just listen to her. Just listen to her. And I, I get it, like one or two times, you won't understand it. No, but the more you do it, you will understand it. Then I started reading Neville Goddard. I yeah. think one of, the, one of the best teachers of law of attraction uh, uh, you, you can ever have. I mean, yeah, if you want to invest, invest in his books. Yeah, I mean, the English is very old, uh, it can get you in trouble a bit. But when yeah. I, I listen to daily nuggets, whenever you post nuggets, I'm like the first one. Okay. <laughs> the nugget, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> You know, now people are talking about Neville Goddard before nobody was talking about it. Yeah. Because understanding Neville is, again, not easy. Again. Yeah. Uh, the way he talked about uh, how he wanted to go to Barbados and he's like, it's done. You know, yeah. how sh he was, the, yeah. the friend Abdul and all that thing, that how sure he was. It's not about that he knew some kind of supernatural powers. It's his belief. Yeah, that was he was trying the doctor and the wife. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, it, it's just like again, I was reading the story. You sent me that story. I don't know how many times in my emails. Just listen yeah. to that story. What is it? I was like, what is? You can go back to that story again and again and again. There's so many lessons in where we go wrong and how to correct it in that one story. I'll post it down below uh, because it is. I, it, it helped me hundreds of times going back to that story right i mean um, i mean no i mean neville goddard reading neville goddard was completely different from all of the law of attraction yeah i think they all come under his uh, umbrella but i think he is the best yeah even uh, it's something different about him people call him crazy i know like say, i'm like yeah. no he's not you yeah. guys don't i mean it's he's not crazy at all actually he's the smartest all, you know? so. and, and he gave everything for free. He was just trying to help people know that God is your own human imagination and that imagination creates reality. I mean, he doesn't say it. No one else says it that simply. Uh, he was the only one I heard say that. And, yeah. and I thought, wow, 
that is profound just those two things yeah i mean um now it's all about uh, getting a uh, you know i mean i uh, you know we money is important thing i'm not going to say that but the thing is like making everything about money is this is not what his concept was no uh, his books were free his audios were free you can still listen it his and lectures like, were free yeah yeah, in the 90s, you know, I like, oh my God, such old things. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, what, what is he saying? Yeah. You know, uh, but um, yeah, Neville Goddard was the one thing. So I, uh, I love like two techniques from Neville Goddard, the revision. Yes. I love that thing. Yeah. It's not even about changing the scene, the way you feel afterwards. Yeah. There's so many things inside me. Like yeah. I had so many things inside me. They were like, they were not good, good memories, yes. you know? Yeah. And so either the outside changes or not, my feeling changes. Yeah. That's the main thing. That's the, the main thing. That feeling, you know, the yeah. feeling that you feel, why did this happen? Where is it? How can I do it? You can actually go back and yeah. revise it. Yeah. So and, un- and you're unhooking yourself emotionally from the response you had to that event or that thing that happened yeah. with that person or whatever rejection at it for a job or you know a lot of it, it i mean a lot of the viewers on the channel have got heaps of pain and and desires that haven't been fulfilled in relation to relationships and work those two areas so absolutely so this this i, I mean i have i never heard about the revision thing i've never heard about yeah. this what about it what revise what is revision yeah now i do it i can revise this yeah. So the first thing is, if something happened, I can revise it. Um, does the situation changes or not? It's not even that important. The feeling inside you changes. Yes. That's the main thing because the, the way we feel, that is what is hurting us. It's not the outside thing. Yes. How we, how we think about that is what, like you said, and no one's in here except for you. No one's in here. It's yeah. only what you're doing no. to you. Yeah, for yes. sure. Oh, that's great. I'm glad you use that technique a lot. I think it's a wonderful technique too. It's not an easy one because you have to go back and often feel the original thing that caused you the pain and then you revise it. So I can see why some people don't like it because you've got to go back and and bring that thing into your mind to start the revision. Yeah, I what I do, I do the revision. If something is not, then I do the whole point after that. Yeah. After nice everything gets out of you yeah you know? and Beautiful. obviously it's not going to be one day it's not a magic thing it is uh, you have to do it like i don't know how much heaps inside is inside you for how long i yeah. don't know yeah so it's better to do it more and you're not losing anything doing by those meditations you're not losing anything instead of going on a facebook page seeing crazy things get affected and cry do the meditation yeah simple yeah, it's just like instead of that, and also this um, another this technique uh, that you talk talk about was uh, using your senses. Um, oh yeah, meditation using the five senses. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Everybody has different senses. Some are visually good. I'm good with the hearing. Yeah. So so I'm good with visually too, but I'm very good with hearing. Okay. okay. Yeah. I was like, she's just use one of your senses. Just use one. You yeah. have. To Feel it, and I was like, okay, what is that one sense that I can feel it, and that is the hearing thing. Yeah. I think so. I just, hearing someone else's voice. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what I want to do is like close, you know, close myself. Like first, of course, it starts with self love. Yeah. If you're feeling bad, it won't work. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's how to do this? You have to uh, feel good. So I do like before I used to do like like so many meditations, like not one self love meditation one two three okay once i do this first best all that i do it then i slowly start to feel okay now i feel a bit better yeah okay, let me do one more time I yeah do, now i feel good okay now let me do something whatever situation i want yeah the situation i want to create but i have to feel it better first yeah it's not okay once i get it then i'm going to get feel better it, it never works that way it never works yeah that's so, true so it depends how much self-love you want. Oh. So I do, and then used to say, close my senses and whatever I want, I always used to pick the, the hearing one. Yeah. I, I'm 
I'm getting good with the visual too. I am, uh, uh, but also creating in my mind. I don't know if this is uh, one of his technique or not because uh, you know the, the the music videos that I got yeah. was actually created in my mind. Ah, and, uh, okay. Yeah. And I used to imagine myself. I'm in a music video. This is not. This is not um, created, Agnes. Trust me. This was okay. not created. This was something in my head I've been going, I think I don't know how long. I used to imagine myself, I am in this beautiful rich place and I'm in love with this guy and you know, we are together and all this and I'm in a music video. I see myself as a music video yeah. artist. And so, but I'm in pain yeah. because this guy leaves me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had the concept for years. I was not even into the modeling business that time. I had that thought, but I never, um, you know, paid attention to it. Yeah. Uh, despite like, I, I, I didn't know anything of uh, LOA or anything about Neo God or anything. Even though I, when I was not manifesting, I still manifested that. Yeah. With, with barely anything. But it came it. with hurdles, I would say. It came with hurdles because again, I had, I never had the belief, you know, so the more I did it, I used to imagine like after doing modeling for two and a half, three years, I got this music video offer. That music video, I just sent you the link is exactly what was in my head. Wow. It's exactly shot that. Yeah. We're going to put the link. Simple- we're going to put the links to both your music videos down below so people can see what you've creatively achieved because they're so good. I remember when I watched, I think the first one, it already had 600,000 views and it was only like not even a week. No, no. And the second one is a 1.6 million. The second one. Wow. It's- wow. That's up to that now. Fantastic. Yeah. 1.6 million. And I was just like, when did I created that? Yeah. You know, <laughs> because I started, the time I started doing LOA, then one of my music video got stopped. I remember messaging you. Yeah. Agnes, something happened. Yeah, and you like no, don't don't think create about this. You just focus on yourself. It's not. It's it's coming. It's coming. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, obviously, I didn't feel good that time. Then I started doing my other work. I didn't stop working. You know, just because one project stopped, I didn't stop to working. I kept working. Yeah, you know. And I used to say myself, my new music music video. You know, I used to hear the director calling me, "Hey, your video is up," and me emailing you. Like living in the end, <laughs> Agnes, I got my That's fantastic. So can I ask you, when you were imagining the music videos, were you looking out your own eyes or you were here the director or how did you imagine it? I, I saw both. I, I was more visual and uh, listening to the director, both. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes, I, I could see. Yeah, and and not like a movie. I'm in the scene. You're I am in the the scene. Okay, and what about for the the modeling? How did you, did you imagine that or that kind of just happened? How did that work? Um, Modeling, um, yeah, okay, this is is funny too. Okay, so I was at this mall, this shopping mall, and uh, there was this designer, I don't remember, and she, there was a mannequin standing there and she was wearing this really beautiful sequins dress so beautiful and I just like take my friend with me this is before the modeling days okay yeah I'm like, let's go, let's go. I'm like how much is it five thousand dollars I'm like hell no <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you know so she's like this dress is just off the ramp you know I don't know which model wore it I don't know and then if you wear it and you know she was trying to sell obviously there was a salesperson yeah I was like and I just look at it, I'm like, you know what, what? one day I'm going to be on the ramp wearing a sequence dress and be the showstopper. That's it. That was it. One thing. Wow. Then things started happening to me. You know, it didn't overnight came to me. It didn't mm. came overnight. I started doing modeling. And that was just one time I imagined myself doing the modeling thing. That was just one time. I got the opportunities. After three months, I wore the same sequence dress. I was the showstopper. <laughs> and I was, when did I create that? That's you know, brilliant. It was so believable. I think yeah. modeling was, uh, I was very easy with it. Yes. Uh, the music video, I was a little bit, you know. Yeah. I was not sure. 
yeah. um, will I get it or not? This, this believes I had this. Yeah. Have you got Paris, have you got actual photos that um, someone we can click on a link and look at your photos or your portfolio or something yeah, so people can see what you've done? Cause that'd be really nice absolutely. to see that as well. Absolutely. I mean, my pages are all public so people can see. Oh, it. good, 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 good. <laughs> Lovely. I mean, I'd like to see them too. I know I've seen a few, but not the whole thing. Let's talk about, too, your incredible experience speaking at the United Nations, because that was the other incredible thing you wrote to me about. And I watched your video where you talk at the United Nations. I would say um, one of the best experience of my life yeah. was going there. Yeah. But I created that. That was yeah. not an uh, accident. Yeah. Um, as I told you, my family is very traditional. They are into this thing. They've yeah. been into the social work and then they wanted me to be on that side as well. Yes. Uh, um, I want, I, I always had that, this thing inside me, serving people, helping people. That's something yeah. always inside me. Uh, but more with the writing thing. I always wanted to be a journalist. That's another passion that I have. Yeah. To write. Yeah. To write is truth. What is the truth? Because nowadays the authenticity of words have gone so low mm. that people don't know what is the truth and what is a lie? Yeah. You know, because there are, there are, there is a situation happening where there are people actually getting paid to write fake stories. Yeah. So that is why the downfall of journalism started. You know, I think news is supposed to inform us, to protect us. Now yeah. it's the opposite. Yes. Um, I was someone always inside me. Like, if I be a journalist, a journalist that's always is one of the biggest dreams I have which mm. I'm still pursuing it and my you know majors in that yeah um after that so once what happened was this the, I was at this event um this culture event again so I see this uh, slides happening and everybody's talking that you can go to the United Nations and speak on behalf of this and that and this. And I'm like, Oh, that's a nice thing. You know? So were you in so Pakistan the, or were you in the U S when you heard that? When in the U S in, in the, the U S I was here. Yeah. In the, yes, I was here. So this really, um, he's just like my brother, he's an elder brother to me and he's, he's always into this thing and he pushed me so many times but I never listened, you know, how you get into it. <laughs> yeah. know, I never listened. I just listened to him. I'm like, what is this? He's like, you go to the UN thing. And I'm like, um, okay, I'll think about it. It was just like randomly. Yeah. And then I, I'm, and then I see this different people going there. I'm like, okay, how do you go there? He's like, you just need to have a US passport. You need to have a, you know, invite, invite letter and you will go through an NGO forum. Again, I want to be, I want to work with NGOs. So I did not want one thing, but I got into two things. Okay. So it's an NGO firm that supports human rights and human rights. Again, that's something I, I'm really passionate about. Yeah. I had that thing in my life for many years, but I never put the focus in it. Yeah. Just the way you tell me, you, you select the book. I didn't select it. Yeah. So I never got it. Okay. So I was like, okay, what is that? I come home. I tell my mom. This is a good opportunity. Do you think like, yeah, that's nice. Do you want to go on that side? But you're in showbiz. Do you see that? Again, she says, you're in showbiz. So, and I never liked you showbiz anyway. Why do you go to that place? That was something not nice. And I was just like, okay, you know, whatever. One week uh, later, what? Okay, this just, guy contacted me. Just explain that. Was she saying because you're in showbiz, you can't do this? Was that what kind of what she was trying to say? Ah, okay. That doesn't look nice because uh, ah, okay. uh, someone who is into showbiz and dancing and music and showing skin, how can they portray <laughs> showing uh, skin? <laughs> I mean, do you see that? I mean, whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That I mean, this was not, I was like, whatever. One week later, this guy contacts me. Uh, he's like, do you want to go? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, we want you to go on the behalf of the NGO firm. Do you yeah. want to go? Yeah. I was like, yeah. So, 
And I was being very vague, you know, I was like, oh, whatever, you know, I was not like, then one day when I think I sat in my room, I didn't do anything. I closed my eyes and I imagined myself sitting in the office of Sibzal in Geneva and giving a speech. I just did one. One imaginal scene. Let it go. That's it. But I was in the scene. And uh, one week later, I got the appointment letter. I got everything. Obviously, it was never a visa issue for me. I had a U.S. passport, so the visa was not an issue for me. Yeah. I was like, okay, but my call is going around. I can't leave my studies and go. Yeah. My teacher said, if I were you, I would leave everything and go to the U.N., you know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to risk my studies. Yeah. This is something so you know, the, the bridge of incidents that happen in your life. Yeah. At the same, I got my spring break holidays for two weeks, same day. So I didn't miss a single class. Wow. Amazing timing. That is unreal. Okay. So I was like, the universe really wants me to go. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I'm so oh, I'm not leaving my college. I'm not leaving my school. No, I paid so much money to go there. That's, you know, I'm not going to do that. But then I was like, exact those dates. I got it. I got the yeah. ticket. While I was sitting in the off, you know, while I was traveling, everything was done. It was so easy. I, I didn't do anything. I, I got the, the, the letter, the this, the that. Everything was like, boom, boom, boom. You know, yeah. I got one week. I got information next week i was planning third week i was on the plane Fantastic. it was not in i sat in the plane i couldn't believe all the way in the plane that i'm going there the minute i i reach geneva again you know europe is so so beautiful yeah it's nothing united states people are very cultured there i'm i'm sorry to say you know yeah. people still maintain that you know, the values i really like that yeah. I reached there, a very different, you know, like the public transport is amazing in, you know, in Europe. Yeah. We don't have it here. We have all, everybody drives a car. So yeah. Yeah. I go there, one or two days I rest. Second day I go into the United Nations building. And this, this was unreal. I was going inside there, you know, where you cure your passport. Okay, why yeah. are you here for? I remember calling myself in my mind. As a speaker, as a human rights speaker for, you know, for the council, he's like, welcome on board. Yeah. And I was like, oh my goodness, I created that. I created that. <laughs> I created that. <laughs> I the room and I see the whole, the UN feeling, mm. my whole perspective changed. Wow. The way, the energy was so high yeah. in that building. Yeah. Nobody was putting anybody down. Nobody wanted to show they are better than anybody else. Everybody was there to find a solution. Mm. That's what meditation is about. Don't focus the problem, focus the solution. Yeah, lovely. When did you actually do that speech? Just so um, the viewers know. When was that? Uh, this was March this year, 2018, yeah. March 5th. Oh, 2018, I last year. And last year uh, or this year? On. No, no, this year. 2019. I'm sorry, 2019. 2019. No, no, this year. Oh, so not that long this ago. Year. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just a few months ago. And yeah. I go inside there. Okay, this is this panel of people standing there. Okay, on this panel, there are double PhDs sitting there. Double PhDs. Yeah. Okay. I haven't done a PhD. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, no, PhD, oh my God. So, okay, I, and it's like, ma'am, this is your seat right here. Ah. You'll be sitting right beside this. There was my name written, everything written. And um, the student, the people who were listening to us, they were all young students. Yeah, I think wow. they pick up the most. Students. I go inside there and they introduce me that she comes from this family, blah, blah, blah. She's the daughter of that. You know, my granddaughter of my uncle. My great grandfather went there in the United Nations in 1970s. I was the second one. Who wow! Went there. That, oh, that is that's so fantastic. 
everybody, oh, she, she, she carries the legacy of this wonderful man, all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, but I created this myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, think it, I started speaking, I started speaking uh, like there were so many people there and some were getting confused. You know how, you know, when uh, there are people in front of you and there's so much press, yeah. you know, it's it really intimidating, very scary. Like when I'm speaking, the camera is right in my face like this yeah. and there are journalists here. So yeah. I was like, where do I, where do I look? Yes. You know? yeah. So there were people that have been into this, this for so many long. I listen to their stories for what they go through and here I speak. So they asked me to speak for the, the first one. Okay, here we go. The full pressure is on me. I'm the yeah. first one to speak. Wow. Then I, I, I'm not the one, when I go to the second one, they're like, okay, okay, do the second one because I was a little nervous that time. Of course. Uh, it was seven minutes. Um, uh, they can give you more time, um, more than seven minutes, because there are many of the speakers that were speaking. I started speaking. Not even you have seen the speech. Not even one minute I looked uh, stressed or not sure. I was speaking. I was yeah. going through it. I was speaking, speaking. Everybody was focused like this. Yeah, you know, they were listening. Actually, I'm not just reading. I'm people are actually listening to me. Yeah. And while there was some content they want me to read it, I was like, no, this is something um, um, not what I believe. It's just like when we talk about dialogue, when we go to a different, such a big platform, United Nations, uh, we are looking for a solution. You don't come in a threatening tone. No. You don't come there as, OK, if you don't do this. We're going to do that. I'm no. just not like this we are more of a solution based so i'm going to cut all this paragraph <laughs> whatever you wrote yeah. and i'm going to put my lines in it okay. yes again that was a very big thing and they're like do it i was like here we go yeah. if i believe it i'm going to do yeah so i did the speech i think it was one of the most um how a satisfying thing yeah in the world i would have done mm. i think that was that put me I was like, I can create anything. That was the, yeah. that the best thing to happen. Yeah. So, and, if you, and because you're really passionate about writing and journalism and words, I mean, what an incredible platform to share your words. Yes. What an incredible platform. That is so wonderful. Yeah, people who actually, you know, um, I don't know if anybody has been there, but trust me, over there is... Nothing like what's happening in the world. Um, it, it is, it is such a. I don't even know how to explain uh, myself. You know, um, this, uh, this 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 whole thing. That was the. That was an amazing oh, experience. Amazing. Fantastic! Yeah. Fantastic! Yeah. Wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! Wow! Well, I'm going to put a link to your speech. I'm going to put a link to your two videos. We're going to put links to your photos so people can have a look at your creative just explosion of wonderful things. It's so exciting. Explosion. I love it. It's an explosion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Explosion. Like me, me going there, everybody was like, how did you get into the United Nations? Uh, you better tell us, yeah. you know, I um, created it. I <laughs> you created know? it. Yeah. Created it. It was just like, yeah. a lot of people still don't believe. Yeah. A lot of people mm -hmm. still believe. Yeah. Were your mom and dad really proud of you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> That, that has more like, that has more credibility than modeling and music videos for them. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, you're still doing the music videos when you're like, what is it has to do with shoes me going to the UN? I don't understand it, you know? <laughs> you know? That's, I think they will understand with time, you yeah. know? I have to create that too. Yes, I have um, to create that, that too. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I have to read that too. But wow. Yeah. What wonderful. experience. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I love how you shared your creative success and your law of attraction practices, how you apply it, how you used to think about things, how you've, you know, developed understanding and, and deeper levels of application. 
I just think that is just, it's so, yeah. the sky's the limit. Like the sky's the limit. What you want to focus on with your thoughts, with what you imagine, how you improve your self-love and what just unfolds in your life. I think you're such a great example. How, can I ask how, how old are you now? I am 32. You're 32. So this is kind of in the last 10 years then? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was too, um, I was too um, stuck with the old beliefs. I had too much beliefs system yeah. in me. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, I, I really have to work on self. I, I, yeah. it, it was uh, it not just uh, career wise, but no. relationship. Yeah. Around and that energy thing, don't throw your energy everywhere. That's the such thing. I used to listen to that. What energy? What thing? Ever. No, yeah. no. You have to be very careful with your energy. Okay. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I am so proud of you. I get so excited when people creatively create. It's just that's so exciting to me. And I think, you know, while there's so many people that watch this channel that are trying to manifest a specific person or a relationship, I think if you can build up your life on other things, it really helps with this other area because your life is becoming just, it's fun, it's creative, it's exciting, you're getting paid to do things you love. You are, you know, looking at future things you want to do. You know, you've done the videos, you've done the United Nations, you've done the modeling. This is all part of your life now. Then it's kind of, what do I want to do next? And creating all that then makes yes. you, you are a more attractive package for a relationship because you've got a really successful, fulfilling, Absolutely. meaningful life. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. and a hundred percent I agree that it's just like it's just self-confidence that the thing you're know, going to attract they say you act what you are not what you want yeah you know so uh, it, it's not even about the people that are on you. It's more about self you feeling and you stop focusing on that feeling either a specific person or a certain thing and you focus on yourself yes that thing starts moving away, you know, when you move away from it and somehow that specific thing, whatever the job, the, the person or whatever it is, it comes back to you. Yeah. You know, it does because you are feeling back. good. Yeah. You, the better you and, feel and, and the better you get. Yeah. And people feel your energy. Trust me. Uh, that is such a big thing. They do. When you feel you don't feel good when you're angry. You're, they all feel it if you're not saying it. They, yeah. They pick it up. They pick it <laughs> so, up. They do. They really do. And, yeah. yeah. So whatever is happening in front of you, something you create. Oh, <laughs> so, exactly. Well, I'm going to put the links yeah. to everything we talked about, the whole Ponopono revision, all that stuff that we discussed. I'll put links to that down below as well. So, Miriam, do you want to say goodbye to everybody before we go? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Agnes, uh, for being a part of my life. I mean, you're such a big part of my life. You know, I, I would never take that away because me starting the LOA or the meditations or whatever, you know, I've achieved. You have been the biggest support I have. I mean, I've been on email coaching with you for years. I think it's three years, right? Uh, I'm still with you and I just always look like whenever I'm just not doing good i'm like i have agnes so go back to her. <laughs> yeah. well i say that to my mom too um, yeah. agnes. okay who is agnes and i'm like no one <laughs> no one forget it <laughs> so, no, so no. thank you i think so many i mean so many people out to and uh it's just like you know sharing the wisdom and the way you know yeah you, you people the screen so positive it's just like so uplifting so thank you for having me and thank uh, you for letting me share my pleasure well everybody i hope you enjoyed this incredibly inspiring creative interview i will see you again as always in the next youtube um paris stay on the line and you and i will say goodbye in private
Bye, everyone.